and thank you for joining today's Scrap Tire Education Outreach Grant Webinar. Um, this meeting will be recorded and will be available to watch through Microsoft Teams at the conclusion of the webinar. It will also be posted to Ohio EPA's YouTube channel at a later date. Just want to remind you to please mute your computers and phones throughout the call to eliminate any background noise. This meeting, as we mentioned, will be recorded, so if you don't want your image to be on the recording, you can turn off your camera. If you have questions, this is going to be an informal webinar, so you may enter them into the chat throughout the presentation. You may also use the raise hand feature that is at the top toolbar, and we'll call on you to ask your questions. If you're not able to send questions to the chat, you can email me. I'll put my email address in the chat here in just a moment. It's jeffrey.monovan at upa.ohio.gov to ask your question. Um, those calling in by phone can press star six if you need to unmute during the call at any point. So again, thank you again for joining today's webinar. So Shannon Cohen with the Scrap Tire Unit is going to give an overview of the new Scrap Tire Education Outreach Grant Program. Thanks so much, Jeff. Good morning and thanks for attending this webinar about the Scrap Tire Education and Outreach Grant Program. It has been a long time coming and DIMWIM is excited to finally launch this grant. Uh-oh. Okay, Phew. The information that will be covered in this webinar are why the grant program was created. I'll briefly explain the activities that make up the model that will be implemented through the grant program. Go over the goals of the Scrap Tire Education Outreach Grant Program. And then we'll go through the sections of the 2023 Scrap Tire Education Outreach Grant application. We'll go over key dates for the grant program and explain the criteria that will be used to evaluate grant applications. And with this being a new grant program, we are sure that you have several questions that you would like to ask. So we want to leave ample time for questions at the end. So why was this grant program created? Well, it was developed to make funding available for health departments and solid waste management districts so they could provide education and outreach to scrap tire generating businesses within their political jurisdictions. But, but honestly, um, the genesis of this program came from two very important meetings, the 2016 Scrap Tire Summit and the 2018 Scrap Tire Forum. For those that did not attend, the 2016 Scrap Tire Summit that was put on by the Organization of Solid Waste Districts of Ohio in partnership with the County Commissioners Association of Ohio, um, came together to gather ideas for combating the persistent problem of illegal tire dumping. These discussions included a variety of legislative, regulatory, programmatic, and infrastructure-based solutions to scrap tire management in Ohio. The feedback that Ohio EPA received from this summit and then the forum was that scrap tire generating businesses are the source of ongoing tire dumping problems. It's primarily due to the fact that they do not secure their tires to prevent theft, and they do not use registered scrap tire transporters. The, the fact that they don't use registered scrap tire transporters either is because they don't know they have to use registered scrap tire transporters, or they purposely do not use them because of the cost. So Ohio EPA is hopeful that data collected through this grant program will help it and its stakeholders address some of these concerns, as well as remedy these issues. In other words, hopefully there is a direct relationship between educating scrap tire generating businesses and realizing a reduction in open dumping. The specific recommendations that were generated from the 2016 Scrap Tire Summit and that were used in the creation of the grant program are, to provide education on scrap tire laws to retail stores and other scrap tire generators, to target have a targeted initiative to inspect tire retail stores, to educate elected officials, and to require scrap tire generators to secure their scrap tires in such a manner as to prevent theft. Now for this last recommendation, um, as we are working through the program, we, we chose this as a targeted behavior but we realized quickly that if this was actually not a requirement in rule, we really couldn't expect people to adopt this behavior. 
So the first step that we took was that we actually updated our scrap tire rules to make this a requirement as scrap tire generating businesses. These rules were promulgated and became effective June 30th of this year. So as, as you see us um, implement this behavior of requiring uh, scrap tire generating businesses to secure their tires, it actually will have some teeth behind it because it's required in rule now. So of the scrap tire management infrastructure that our high EPA regulates, scrap tire generating businesses are the weak link. There are, they are numerous, something like 5,000 to 8,000 based on uh, the standard industrial classification codes that are used and a systematic statewide approach to making them aware of their regulatory obligations has never been performed. So based on discussions, discussions had had at these two meetings and recommendations received, and then the fact that we do not actually, we have never had a um, statewide approach to educating scrap tire generators, DIMWIM decided to develop a scrap tire generator education outreach campaign. This campaign is made up of three phases. We have completed phase one, which is a scrap tire generator toolkit. This toolkit became available in 2019. And essentially there are two parts to this toolkit. Um, the first part is that EPA essentially tr treats it as a repository of all of the resources that it has created to educate scrap tire generators and primarily scrap tire generating businesses about their regulatory responsibilities. This toolkit was created for solid waste management districts and health departments. The other part of the toolkit is actually explaining resources that EPA has available as well as the Attorney General Office to deal with open dumping. So we explain our no fault, no fault program and then enforcement measures at the civil and criminal level that our high EPA can assist health departments and solid waste management districts with as well as provide you um, access to the resources we use our templates to forward uh, cases to the Ohio Attorney General. We are presently in phase two, which is creating, piloting, and refining a model for providing education and outreach to scrap tire generating businesses. Once we complete this phase, we'll move into phase three, which is broad scale implementation of the model, model monitoring the efficiency of the model, uh, developing a statewide scrap tire generating business database. So in other words, as, as we kind of explain the grant program and the model, you'll see that Part of the requirement is that you we will you will have to submit to Ohio EPA a list of all the scrap tire generating businesses that are, are found through the grant program. We're going to develop the statewide uh, database and use this information to provide more education outreach, maybe more targeted education outreach to these businesses. Uh, we can use this data to, for survey efforts. You know, maybe if we want to make statutory changes, we also can just have this um, information available to share with our partners. And then um, in phase three, we will make a determination as to whether a permanent grant program is needed to provide ongoing education and outreach to scrap tire generating businesses. So right now we're targeting scrap tire generating businesses, providing education and outreach, but maybe there just may be a, a, a permanent grant program that needs to be available to deal with all education and outreach related to scrap tire, relate, uh, scrap tire issues. Okay, so I kind of want to talk about how we developed this model. So building off the recommendations that I had on previous slides, Ohio EPA surveyed its partners to better understand the qualitative information they gained from inspecting and interacting with scrap tire generating businesses. Ohio EPA also surveyed scrap tire generating businesses via paper surveys, in-person interviews, and survey monkey to glean how they have their scrap tires delivered, removed, and how they store their scrap tires. In the process of developing this model, DOOM also decided to utilize the community-based social marketing methodology since it utilizes tools that have a, a proven record of working for the public sector and it supports local involvement, which is how Ohio EPA interacts with, is, with the um, people that it regulates or entities that it regulates, as well as health departments and solid waste management districts. A work group of committee of a work group committee was was convened of various stakeholders. And so here on the slide, I kind of tell you the makeup of that work group. We had a health department environmental health specialist sanitarian, 
a solid waste management district environmental enforcement deputy. We have representation from four of our five district offices. Those are primarily inspectors. We have three scrap tire generating businesses. Two were retailers. One was a motor vehicle salvage dealer. We had a solid waste management director um, on the committee, litter control program representation, and county Keep Ohio Beautiful representation. This committee was formed um, and they used the recommendations, results from the survey effort, their own expertise, and the community-based social marketing methodology of brainstorming barriers and benefits to adopting behaviors and then developed strategies as a basis for the model. Ohio EPA developed the model from the work group committee recommendations, and now we're ready to pilot the model. So let's kind of talk about what this model involves. Let me first say this model is very prescriptive. All required activities are explained and needed resources are provided by the model by Ohio EPA. The model will be performed by an education and outreach coordinator. And it's just very important to mention that this is the word, the term that the model calls the person that performs, um, that actually implements the model. This person could be a sanitarian, a solid waste management district director, or someone that the health department or the solid waste management district chooses to use to implement the model. So let's kind of go through the steps of the model. First, uh, the EOC or edu education outreach coordinator will identify all the scrap tire generating businesses within a targeted area, such as a municipality, a township, you know, depending on how rural it is, maybe even a county. At the same time that they're identifying these scrap tire generating businesses, they're going to have to communicate with the local government officials and law enforcement that have jurisdiction within that targeted area. We want to make sure that they understand um, that you're going to be performing outreach to the businesses that they that they have jurisdiction over. We want to make sure we have support for them. You know, the last thing we want is for someone to um, be reaching out to these businesses and then they uh, call a government official and say, you know, you know, with a complaint. So want to gain support there. Once you've identified the scrap tire generating businesses within that targeted area that you choose and you've communicated with your local government officials and law enforcement, you're ready to move on to uh, perform your visits. There will be three visits in total. The first one is called initial contact and, and first visit. So when you when the um, when you begin to go out to your scrap tire generating businesses, You'll make initial contact, you're um, um, kind of develop a rapport, introduce why you're there. There'll be a resource packet of information that you can share with the scrap tire generating businesses to explain what the regulatory requirements are, uh, the purpose of the program. And then on that first visit, you will also begin to determine how much they've adopted two targeted behaviors. The two targeted behaviors are for them to secure their scrap tires at their place of business, and to use a registered scrap tire transporter to bring tires to their business and remove tires from their business. After that first visit, you'll perform a second visit, a follow-up. Again, um, this is a shorter visit, is to see how you know, you've given them some time to adopt those two behaviors. You'll be there to answer any questions they have, um, concerns they have. And then the third visit is, is, a, is uh, done in a similar fashion. You're there to determine if they've adopted the two uh, desired behaviors, and then again, be there to provide resources to them, answer any questions, address any concerns they have. At the end of the third visit, if they've adopted those two behaviors, they will be recognized and, and given a, a decal. And then um, you will essentially tally all the results of your, of your visits to the scrap tire generating businesses and submit uh, that information to EPA along with some other fiscal fiscal requirements. So you'll have a closeout report that has to be completed and submitted to Ohio EPA. So I just wanna, before we start going through the application, talk about, just kind of sum up the goals of this, of this um, grant program. The goals are to have, a, have scrap tire generating businesses adopt two scrap tire management behaviors, secure their scrap tires at their place of business and use a registered scrap tire transporter. Make scrap tire generating businesses aware of the services that Ohio EPA offers. So in the case of 
the person performing this grant, their responsibilities we are really are to target these adoption of these two behaviors, but we will also arm that person with resources that the EPA has. So for example, if the scrap chart generating business has questions about universal waste or something, we have a contact that you can give them to give them over to. We're also going to develop a database of scrap tire generating businesses for future outreach efforts. And then um, hope we're definitely, of course, the goal, major goal is to reduce open dumping in that targeted area. So now I want to help you find this, this um, grant information. All of this information is on it is located on a dedicated web page on EPA's um, at EPA site. So um, our website is epa.ohio.gov. You'll go to that web page. And as you scroll down from our home page, there's a, a section called our divisions and you'll click on our division, which is the materials and waste management division. Once you're on our web page for our division, over on the left, you'll see um, different areas that you can click into and you'll wanna click onto the grants area. Kind of, oh, well, never mind. Just trying to use my mouse. Um, when you click on the grants page, you'll see that there are three grants that are associated with our division. You'll wanna click on the Scrap Tire Education and Outreach Grant. Once on that web page, I just want to bring to your attention, we have several tabs set up to share, to provide information to you. So the first one is the resources tab. All of the resources that you need to implement the model will be located under the resources tab. Um, then there's the grant application and instructions tab, which is where um, I'll spend most of my time today. We have a scrap tire generator business education outreach model. So this is a copy of the model itself with instructions on how to implement the model. We have a video tab, so there are going to be videos created to target portions of implementation of the model. So the first video we've um, we've uh, created is, of course, the promo video. Hopefully you have seen it. Um, we're working on our second video, which is actually the video that you will um, provide a link to when you do communication with local officials and um, lo uh, local law enforcement. And then we have a contacts tab, and that's where everyone that you can uh, reach out to and ask questions about the grant can answer questions for you. Uh, their, their contact information will be provided there. So going back to the grant application instructions tab, you'll want to click on that tab. And it, when you click on that tab, there are three uh, resources available, the grant application, grant application instructions, and then scoring guidance. When you click on the grant application, this is what the grant application looks like. You'll have to download the file. It is a fillable word form. And this is the application that you will submit to a higher EPA either through email or through regular mail. So now let's go through this grant application. Okay, so the first section is applicant information. And there are four entities in which we ask for information about. We ask about the app, we ask for information about the applicant, the grant applicant, contact person, authorized official, and fiscal officer. The authorized official is a person designated by the applicant to administer the grant and sign the grant reports and revisions. For each one of these entities, we ask for their name, their title, their address, their email, and their phone number. Now let's kind of really get into the meat of the application. So section two is called the general narrative for grant proposal. And there are four categories of four categories under this section. Project impact, project benefit, financial need and project commitment and readiness. It's important to mention that certain categories are eligible to receive additional discretionary points. And I will cover these as we go over this section. Now, the, the goal of this section is really to explain um, the value that the grant program will provide for the targeted area. The first category is project impact. Information about project impact is requested first by asking the applicant 
to identify the county's economic health where the education outreach will be performed. The application specifically asked for the well-being score for the county that is located in the 2021 State of Poverty in Ohio report. This report contains a dashboard that examines four socioeconomic and poverty indicators, which include poverty rate, unemployment rate, uh, percentage of students receiving free and reduced price lunches from schools, and four-year high school graduation rates. These measures were chosen because they each gauge a slightly different aspect of a county's economic health. It is important to mention here that applicants with a level three or level four well-being score will be given additional points. Project Impact also requests demographics for the targeted area and considers whether specific groups or populations such as minorities, ethnic communities, cultures, or particular regions will be served through the education and outreach. For project benefit, it's important to mention that a targeted area that has a history of open dumping issues is eligible for additional points under uh, project benefit. And then for readiness, an applicant that has already identified some or all of the scrap tire generating businesses in its targeted area may score higher in this category. They may be given additional points as well. When completing section two, make sure to refer to the score guide um, that I showed you previously on our webpage, because it will explain the criteria that the grant reviewers will use to score the completeness of the answers provided. We're trying to be very transparent about what we consider a complete answer. From beginning to end, the grant program is designed to be completed within six months. One requirement in the grant application is to provide tentative dates when required activities will be performed. The specific activities that have to be accounted for in the timeline include communication, identifying scrap tire generating businesses, initial contact and first visit, second visit, third visit, implementation of the recognition program, and close out report to Ohio EPA. So these, again, are the activities that have to be performed and they um, are tied to a timeline. It's important to mention that the grant application also asks how education outreach coordinators are going to communicate with local officials and local law enforcement. At a minimum, a letter and email with a link to the communication video is required. If more outreach is required, please explain what will be done in this uh, portion of the application. The other thing this application does is that it also points you to a resource table because we've created a whole bunch of resources that you can use to provide more communication to local officials and local law enforcement. It's really up to your to your discretion what kind of communication needs to take place because you understand the targeted area. For example, um, an email to a mayor may not be may not suffice. You may feel like it's important for you to attend a city council meeting, for example. Okay, so I want to go to this table with you and talk about key uh, key um, key points of the timeline. So again, the first activities is communication, where you reach out to local officials and law enforcement. And it's important to mention that communication has to be completed two weeks prior to initial contact with scrap tire generating businesses. Kind of for reasons that I explained earlier, we want to make sure that they um, you have you have if not their support, at least they feel comfortable with you going out to their businesses and that they're aware that you're going to be you're going to be doing that. So uh, you have communication. And you also have to identify the scrap tire generating businesses. You have to identify your scrap tire generating businesses and perform communication before you can make initial contact and perform your first visit. So once you've identified your scrap tire generating businesses and you perform communication, you'll make initial contact and perform your first visit. What's important to mention is 30 days have to elapse before you can, at least 30 days have to elapse before you can perform your second visit. And you can't um, go more than 45 days without performing, moving on to your second visit. So we wanna give them at least 30 days to implement some of the recommendations that you make to them, say 
for example, to secure on how to secure tires on their site or to find a registered scrap tire transporter to pick up their tires. But we don't want more than 45 days to elapse before they actually um, before you reach back out to them, because we don't want to kind of start the process again. The visit um, again, 30 day, 30 days, um, a minimum of 30 days between the second visit and the third visit, can you can you guys see? We I lost. Um, yeah, you lost connectivity in just a second, so we'll just start that slide. Okay. Again, if you want. Then we'll have to reshare. I'm sorry. Um, somehow I've lost uh, my slides. Just one sec, so sorry. Okay, share here. Oh, okay, I think we're back up and running. So sorry about that. Um, again, th for the third visit, uh, wait 30 days after the second visit, Go back out, visit the scrap tire generating business, determine if they've adopted behaviors, answer questions, all that. Don't let allow more than 45 days to elapse before you make that third visit. Then at the time of the third visit, you can make, if you're able, you can make that deter determination right then or there. If they've adopted the behaviors and if they're eligible for, um, for recognition by being given Ohio EPA decal. You have 30 days from the third visit to um, provide those decals to scrap tire generating businesses that have earned one essentially. And then final report to Ohio EPA, our closeout report, that's required to be received within 45 days of completing the third visit or no later than June 15, 2024, whichever occurs first. Okay, thanks, Jeff. So now I want to go through section four, which is the funding, the funding request. There are three categories that that are covered under funding request. Identify scrap tire generating businesses, uh, scrap tire generating business site visits, and the closeout report. Of the three categories, and so all those add up to $20,000 $20, in the application, you will hopefully we've created this interactive application and, and it will tally it up for you to let you know, you know, um, if you've exceeded the amount that is, is allowed. One thing that I have to mention here is uh, whatever you request in the in the grant application and you're approved for, we cannot provide more than what is requested or you're approved for. So if you um perform the model and you find out, oh, it took me, it, it took me more than 5,000, you know, like say you request 3,000 to identify scrap, to, uh, you know, locate all the scrap type generating businesses in your targeted area, come to find out, oh, it actually cost me more than 3,000. We're not able to give you the difference um, up to 5,000. Whatever you request is only what we can approve to give you. So please make sure that you really think through um, how you're going to go about performing these activities and what it's going to cost you. Now, one thing I did want to mention is that for, for the actual visits, this is the only place in the application where we have a, a table where you have to fill in information. Um, it's important to mention when estimating that a maximum of one hour is allowed for the first visit and a maximum of a half an hour is allowed for the second and third visits. The decision to only allow an hour's worth of time for the first visit and then a half an hour for the second and third visit is based on um, actual time that it that we use during the survey effort to um, to go out and visit scrap tire generating businesses. So this this decision to use for the half hour is really based on the amount of time it took for us um, answering a lot of questions, um, maybe even waiting to speak to the right person. How much time it took us? So. Um, just wanted to make you aware of, of where those where those numbers came from, where those limits came from. So, and Shannon, just yes. um, before you move on, there's a question just to clarify: Is the maximum budget twenty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand total? Oh, I'm um, twenty thousand. Yeah, five 
5,000 for um, identifying the businesses. Um, what was it? Um, 19,000 max to actually perform the visits and 1,000 to complete the closeout report. Just important to mention here, cost estimates should include travel time and mileage. And cost estimates should be viewed as a rate to perform a site visit, which we deem an activity. So for um, when you're identifying scrap tire generating businesses and performing communication, um, when you're visiting scrap tire generating businesses, and then when you complete in your um, determining how much it's going to cost to, to perform your to um, provide us your closeout report, we do ask for a narrative and justification um, in the form of a description of the activity and the purchases. Um, you know, what is it going to cost to track the activity? You know, and what is that? You know, and purchases and the cost estimate to complete the activity. So, for example. Um, if you're if you're to locate your scrap tire generating businesses, you're going to use a consultant um, that has access to the Harris directory. You know, you would the activity might be tracked by requiring the consultant to provide a list within two weeks of of scrap tire generating businesses based on um, SIC codes. And then the cost estimate might be a flat fee for the service. So this is the type of detail that we need to understand how you arrived at. Uh, your funding request for the different for the three different categories identified on the slide. The application has to be signed by an authorizing official. And again, the authorized official is a person designated by the applicant to administer the grant and sign the grant reports and revisions. So now let's kind of go over some key dates. The application will open September 1st. And I just want to mention we are making some updates to the application. So while the application, there is a draft application up there right now, please, you know, please take time to, to look over it. I would not download the application until September 1st. So go with the one that is on the website starting September 1st. The application deadline is October 2nd. That's the date it has to be either emailed to Ohio EPA um, or postmarked if you're sending it through the mail. Award announcements will be in November of 2023. We're going to work very hard to make those announcements very early, um, but, we, but we're kind of giving ourselves most, of, you know, as much of the time as we need, but we really are, we're shooting for November 1st. And then there's going to be a mandatory training video mainly to uh, deal with the uh, grant agreement, but we may also create a training video just to kind of uh, touch on some issues that may arise as you go out and visit scrap tower generating businesses, helpful hints, and kind of how EPA would expect you to resolve uh, some of the issues you, you may you may run into, if especially if you're not an inspector, normally an inspector. Um, for signed grant agreement, that's to be determined. The payment schedule will be two disbursements. So um, half up front and then half after we receive the closeout report. And that closeout report, report is June, June 15th, 2024. So the criteria we're going to use to evaluate the application, you have to complete all sections of, we're expected to complete all sections of the application. As you kind of saw, it's really not a very involved application. And I think one re you'll find that it's very easy to complete um, and one reason why it is, is because the model is very prescriptive. We essentially dictate what you do. Um, we need you to, where, where we really are looking for um, a lot of thought is um, when you're when you're requesting funds, please provide cost estimates that follow the criteria provided in the instruction manual and then provide narrative to justify your cost estimates. Again, following the criteria provided in the instruction manual. We're looking for clear and concise narratives in all required sections, and we highly recommend that you review that scoring guidance that's available on the webpage so you understand what we, de what we deem a complete answer. And now we are going to open the floor for questions. 
and Shane, do you mind going back to your timeline for just a moment? I sure can. OK, so the November 15th, we had a question. Can you avoid November 15th National Recycling Day? So just to clarify that video they have from November 15th, to January 15th, anywhere in that window to complete it, right? Yes. OK, so that shouldn't conflict with National Recycling Day um, if you're not able to get the video there. You'll still have, what, roughly three months to or too much rather to complete that. Right. And I mean, the video is to highlight important points about the, the grant agreement that you'll sign. And then also, again, to share information about as you're going out and inspecting these scrap tire generating businesses, um, tr try to provide helpful hints on some of the things that you may encounter and how to kind of navigate that. So, yeah. And just a reminder, if you have any questions, please enter those into the chat. You can also use the raise hand uh, feature at the top of the toolbar. And we'll call on you and go unmute yourself and ask your question, or you can also email me at jeffrey.monovan at epa.ohio.gov if you're on to use the chat or to use the raise hand feature. So um, please go ahead and enter those questions and um, Jane would be happy to give a response. I'll give us a couple minutes to enter anything into the chat. And we did also put the link to the um, Scrap Tire Education Outreach Grant Program in the chat, so you can, should be able to click on that and see all the details too. You know, since I, we do have some time to kind of elaborate, one thing that was very important to the work group committee was that this model was something that could be implemented by really a lay person. It doesn't have to be someone who was accustomed to ins inspecting um, facilities or entities like a health, you know, health department inspector or you know, EPA inspector, uh, you know, a sanitarian or anything like that. So, um, with that said, you know, it's designed for a college intern. It's designed for a seasonal employee. Um, it's designed for a, a you know um, a part-time education and outreach person that maybe uh, it works at a solid waste you know management district or or someone in a community. So just be mindful of those of those types of things that you're thinking about um, who you might want to use as an education and outreach coordinator. It is not uh, technical by nature in in any in any way. It's really someone who does well communicating with people. Uh, very approachable um, and it's just really trying to you know help them out and help them understand the importance of adopting two uh, two of these behaviors and uh, another question did come in do you have any idea how many grants you'll be about distributing well um the maximum that can be that can be given out is twenty thousand dollars to to an applicant. But this being kind of the pilot of the model, our our desire is to actually have representation for all the all the regions of the state. And so um, we would we definitely would like to, for, you know, if you look at how the EPA district offices are set up for each the counties that make up each EPA district office, we would like to uh, since they're five. The max we would give for each region is is forty thousand dollars. So, if two applicants come in that are you know you know targeting large big sections of a city come in and they are awarded and they make and they um, essentially end up um, th their request equals that forty thousand. Then unless we are not getting requests from other portions of the state, you know that would be the max we would give to that region is forty thousand. And then Kelly's going to elaborate on that too. Yeah, so um, what we were able to receive in funding for the entire grant program was $200,000. And so really it depends on um, the amount of requests that we get in at that 20,000 maximum amount. So obviously if people feel that they can do it for less than that, and then we get a lot of smaller requests coming in, there will therefore be more people that will be granted um, you know, granted the money. And so the idea with this one, since it is the first time around, we're hoping that based on 
uh, the information that everyone gathers through this, that in future years we can ask for additional funding so that we can have even more people doing this kind of work. But it is, uh, as Shannon said, a pilot, so we were only allocated $200,000 to start with to then um, basically give out to people as they apply. And and just, you know, just, just to kind of uh, throw out there, you know, if you're in a really large city and you know that you can only target a portion of that city, you know, just make that, just explain that in your, your grant application, you know, so. Because you potentially, depending on how things go and we keep the program going and, you know, I'd be able to say, okay, I'm going to target the northern portion. Now I'm going to target the eastern portion or whatever, however, you know. But just justification and narr good narrative really helps us to understand uh, what you want to do and maybe even your vision long term for providing outreach to all all the businesses. Just a reminder, if you have questions, please put those in the chat or use the raise hand feature. Um, we'll give you a couple more minutes to uh, ask those questions. And Kelly, are there any questions we've received so far that you want to elaborate on? Oh yeah, I can go over some of the questions we received prior to um, prior to this meeting that we got in through email or just people calling. So one of the questions was, are people expected to cite violations during this grant? And the answer is definitely not. We specif um, specify that this is an education activity so while you're actually performing the grant work you would not be citing any violations the ideal is to educate them on how to comply and help them now after the three visits and after you're done with the grant if you are an approved health district i mean at that point you take it from there and you can then follow through and cite them do whatever you need to do if you are a unapproved health department that received a grant or solid waste management district that does not have the ability to cite violations, then we would ask, you know, hey, let us know people that are still not in compliance after three visits, and then we can um, assist at that point. Um, another question that we got in was about the maximum allocated funding per visit, and I think we have that, what, it's 16 on the low end, $16 per visit up to 32 and kind of how we came about that number was we looked at generally what the state of Ohio pays one of its interns, and that's around $16. Um, assuming that a lot of folks would be trying to use, you know, interns if they could. Um, and so that's what we're saying that, you know, on the low end, you'd pay 16. If you're requesting the full 32, it's kind of assumed that perhaps you're in an area where you're wanting to send out two people, maybe for safety concerns. Um, the specific question we had was that, hey, I don't really have an intern, so I'm going to be using, you know, some regular staff. They, they make more than that an hour. Um, so while I want to be clear that this is not a salary reimbursement, it's really just funding to do a visit, you can certainly use um, that as a justification for why, why you would want to request, hey, uh, 16 isn't going to work for me, but, you know, 20, 20 will. Um, so you can definitely do that, put that in your application, request what you feel you need to do within that frame of $16 to $32 per visit, and we'll take a look at that. But just know we are not, this is not a salary reimbursement grant. It's just a grant to do visits, which is a little bit different. And I think that's all I've had so far. Yeah. We do have another question pop up here in the chat. It's like, what are you wanting this scrap tire generating business to accomplish or do? We, I mean, we really want them to adopt two behaviors. The behavior is to secure scrap tires and to use a registered scrap tire transporter. There, are, so for a for a scrap tire generating business business, and if you're not really familiar with our regulations, um, essentially we're we're targeting businesses that store scrap tires. 
And the way our regulations are set up is that unless you're really intended to be a facility that stores scrap tires, we don't want we don't want to put them through rigorous regulations. So in our what we have in our rules, we have all these exclusions from having to become a scrap tire facility. And a lot of these exclusions are for scrap tire generating businesses like retailers, motor vehicle salvage dealers, um, retreaders that store tires and counter tires, but that's not. They're not really trying. Their business is not trying to be a, a, a you know a, a scrap tire facility. That's you know they just kind of encounter tires and it's part of their business plan, but they never had any plan of really being a regulated scrap tire facility, which our regulations are very rigorous. Um, so what we so these businesses have really their obligations are to perform mosquito control this is what we have in our rules they perform mosquito control they're required to use registered scrap tire transporters to deliver tires to their to their business and to take them from their business and they're required to secure scrap tires at their place of business so um in the process of developing this model we decided what are the two behaviors that we feel are most important for them to adopt to help us address this open dumping problem? Well, if they're leaving their tires out for someone to steal, those potentially could end up being open dumped. So we want to address them adopting the behavior of securing their tires, locking them up. And then if they're not using a registered transporter who essentially um, has a financial obligation to who, you know, actually by entering into becoming a registered transporter and they put up financial assurance, um, they essentially have a uh, financial, there, there are ramifications, I guess, for them not um, properly operating because we could pull their financial assurance um, and clean up tires that they they either open dump or, or abandon. Um, and we could essentially in that process also kind of hurt their their business because of having to pull that financial assurance. Um, we want them to give the tires to people who essentially have some skin in the game, who have implications for not following our rules. And that is to, for them to give those tires to a registered transporter. So if they give those tires to a registered transporter, then there's less likelihood that they're going to be open dumped. And so those are what those are the two behaviors that we want them to adopt. Thanks, Shannon. Um, we'll give you another minute to put in any questions in the chat. Um, we raise your hand also. And one of the things you will be having a kickoff event for the grant, is that correct? Sir? Yes. I'm not seeing any additional uh, questions in the grant. So um, if there's any questions that follow up, uh, feel free to reach out to Shannon. Um, those specific questions. Just a reminder: the application will open up September first and close on October second at three o'clock p.m. So, um, we must have that submitted by that period of time. Oh, and, uh, gosh! I never. Yeah. I don't think I got to my last slide. Yeah, there's so you, can, <laughs> so you can actually submit. Oh gosh! And wow. Our email addresses are missing here, but they're on the web page. And you can submit your application to any uh, one of us. So I'm Shannon Cohen, and then Kelly Jeter, who has been answering questions, is my supervisor. And then we have Courtney Nugent with us, who is also part of the Scrap Tire Unit. Um, you can submit your, um, you can email your application to any of us. So, and you can reach out to any of us to answer questions. Thank you again, everyone, for joining. Um, seeing no other questions, uh, Courtney's putting uh, contact information into the chat there. Um, so if you have questions um, as you kind of digest the information here, feel free to reach out to Shannon, Courtney, or Kelly and get responses to those uh, questions. And once again, we greatly appreciate you participating today. Thanks, Courtney, for doing that. Mm -hmm.